Today at Akuma, we're talking software, the upgrades, the beautiful machine, automation, horizontal machining, and filtration that might change the way your shop does business. All right, Wade, it's good to have you. It's good to be here at Akuma. I'm excited to talk yeah. about all of these topics, but let's first start with software and tease them a little bit about the part that we're making as well. But let's leave that toward, a little bit toward the end, right? All right, let's do it. So at Emo here this year, we've debuted five machines with our new OSP P500 control. So along when, with the control, when we upgrade the control software, the look and feel, we also went through and changed the aesthetics of the machine. So talking about the control side, first thing that you notice when you walk up to it is a new slick look and feel to it. A lot of the push buttons have gone from mechanical push buttons to software push buttons. So we've reduced the, the amount of buttons and operations on the actual control, but we've kept a numeric keypad, which our customer base has told us is very important for the type of work that they do. We've also updated the computer. So this is now running a quad core processor. So we've got a lot more horsepower to the control itself. We're actually driving two separate computers now to separate out the motion control aspect to the Windows side that's doing all the connectivity. As you know, everything that we do in manufacturing is going more and more digital. So the, the pull on that horsepower from the computer aspect to power all the digital connectivity, we've separated that out to be able to give more uh, power and speed to those processes without taking anything away from what's most important for us, and that's the chip making side of the process, right? Absolutely correct. We love to make chips. It's humming yeah. right now. I love that sound as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. The processing speed, I don't know why we sometimes overlook it, but we definitely shouldn't. The machines, they're humming, they're purring. We've really got them going right now. The, the levels of how fast can my spindle go? How precise can I be? We're always competing with this side of things as well. So it's really cool yeah. to hear that you're now doubled down on how fast that computer can go on the inside. Wait, I've also noticed this machine is quite slick as well. It is, the, the we've got a whole new look and feel to all these machines when they come out with the P500 control. We've got some stainless steel uh, dams added to all the corners of the machines. Um, some new look and feel on the aesthetics of the door, the operator panel that they're interfacing with. Um, so everything has really been updated from the control all the way through all the outer panels of the machines themselves. And that moves us into some of what we did from a demo standpoint. Um, obviously, anytime you come to a machine show, you want to show the latest, greatest technologies. So when we look at the demo part that we're doing on this machine, it's a simple cast iron part but that opens up a lot of conversations with customers because we're not just machining this part on different planes and making flat surfaces. This is actually 3D surfaced. So we're showing the power of the machine and the control aspect. As you can see, there's no sharp edges going around that part, and yet these lines are straight as an arrow, even though we're doing a 3D contour motion, a spiral end cut on this. So we're showing a lot of power cuts with big drills on the bore, and then we're showing really small, fine cast iron to show off the sludgeless coolant tank that this machine comes with. So most of our newer horizontals, as we're rolling them out to market, we're bringing them out with the sludgeless coolant tank. And part of that tie-in is because when you look at that automation piece on the background, you can have all the pallets that you want, but if you have unexpected downtime, if you have a coolant tank that jams up a coolant pump or plugs a through spindle coolant and you break a drill and you shut it down, that is of no consequence at that point, right? So a lot of what we're trying to do is open those conversations with customers that it's not just tying automation, it's not just putting a piece of a pallet pool or a robot onto a machine, it's all the aspects that go into making sure this machine runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so you get the productivity from your automation that you're expecting. Oh, Wade, you nailed all of the subjects that I wanted to cover without even me asking. I love that. It makes my makes job it easy. easier. It makes, <laughs> makes everything easier. Um, and the first thing I want to bring up is it sounds like you really are that full solutions provider. You've talked about automation. You've talked about the machine. you talked about the filtration system that comes along with it. Right. And that allows someone, as you said, from beginning to end to keep the machine up and spinning as we started with making chips, right? That's how Absolutely. we're making that money. Yep. But I want to look at this part a little bit closer with you. Certainly. And then I want to go into the filtration side a little bit more. Yeah. Not too in depth, but a little bit more. And okay. this 
for the audience watching right now, it may look like you're supposed to take a shell mill or something, kind of mill off that top bit. But what Wade is talking about and knows far better than I do as well, is they purposely did it this way because it's showing the capability of the machine behind me. And if I touch right. this, if Wade touches this, yeah. neither of us are being cut. Yeah, there's it's no sharp smooth edges as can be and purposely done from this angle, from yeah. this angle yeah. so we yeah, could from show. The horizontal. And, and we're 3D spiraling in, so we're actually contour cutting all of those surfaces and showing that we have absolute perfect straight lines, straight edges, broken radiuses, everything so that it's smooth to the touch and all of our lines are perfectly straight, even though we're not making any straight motions on that part. All right, now let's talk about the fact that this is cast iron. Yes. And different materials from different places will create different issues within our machines. Absolutely. But we're focused on cast iron today. What happens when cast iron builds up? And what is your filtration system done to help resolve that? Right. So cast iron will sit up inside your coolant tank or even inside certain areas of your machine, and it will solidify basically like concrete. So back when I was a machinist, when I was just a, a young guy starting out in the you trade. still are. About every three or four months, we would have to pull the coolant tank out. We'd suck all the coolant out, and I would literally get in with a hammer and a chisel and knock the corners out to break all that cast iron out of the machine because we ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week machining cast iron. It's black, nasty. It creates a fine, powdery swarp. So the coolant tank that you're going to see here in this video, this is our sludgeless coolant tank. There's three, basically three layers of protection that goes into the design of that tank. First one is the flow of the coolant. When you look at a sludgeless tank, the coolant, all of your dirty coolant that comes into the tank flows unidirectionally. There's only one path that that coolant flows through. So you don't get cavitation. You don't get eddies that, that pull up, causing swarp to, to drop down from the coolant. So that becomes a nice smooth motion, almost like a, a lazy river in a hotel, right? It's just a nice smooth roundabout that you can go around. And then the corners of the coolant tank are all rounded. When you look inside, if you see that coolant tank empty, there's no sharp corners. Everything has a radius, again, so you don't create turbulence in the coolant. Then we have a drum filtration system on the chip conveyor itself. That feeds into a cyclonic filtration to take any residual particles out. So we have had these running in our uh, factory in Japan uh, for four years now. And when you pull those coolant tanks out, suck all the coolant out, those tanks are still clean after four years of full automated production in pure cast iron. Very that is, impressive. That is very impressive. You took the words right out of my mouth, Wade. <laughs> Last question for you. Do yeah. I get to keep this? Uh, that one you can, yeah. yeah. I do actually get to keep one that I asked for on camera. I'm going to set it down for now. It's going to weight down your suitcase quite a bit. Well, that's all right. However, what I want to do in conclusion, Wade, that was impressive. The one thing I really took from this, well, I took a lot of things from this, but one thing that really stood out to me is the part that Wade talked about with the automation. We can invest in the work cells. We can invest in the cobots and robots and all of these things, but let's not overlook all of the other components as well, in this case, the filtration system, because as you said, if that goes down, that becomes useless and we gotta right. keep the spindle spinning. To me, that's what stands out. So when you're looking for your machines, when you're looking for your partners, when you're talking to Wade and Akuma and these folks, make sure that they're thinking about your best interest from beginning to end and everything in between because that's who you want to work with, in my opinion, because they're going to make sure you're taken care of. Wade, thank you Perfect. so much, my friend. I appreciate you. you. You're always a pleasure to talk to. Appreciate it, Tony. Thanks for coming by.